You're watching the Primetime Christian Broadcasting Network, home of God's Learning Channel. Praise God and welcome to tonight's program. I think you're really going to enjoy this program because it's a little different than what we normally do, but that's just because we never had a guest like this before. And I think you'll certainly enjoy it. Our guest is Jesse Lee Patterson. You probably have heard him on the radio Peterson. around here. Peterson. Peterson. That's what happens with old age. It's Peterson. <laughs> and uh, But um, Tommy heard Jesse on the phone, says, I called him. Radio. Radio, rather, and got him on the phone. Hey, you <laughs> <laughs> No, I'll just sit here and do mom's job. You do mom's job. <laughs> and, uh, but you're going to find out why Tommy wanted him to come and be on this program. And in the few minutes that we've been able to spend with him, I am delighted that you're here, Jesse. God Thank you very bless much. You. Yeah. Um, where's home? Los Angeles. I originated from Alabama, though. I, I grew up on a, a plantation right outside of Montgomery, Alabama. And my grandparents were to their parents, their parents, my parents, and so did I, uh, until the age of uh, 18 when I moved to Los Angeles. You know, I was in the Navy with a guy from Montgomery. He was one of my best friends. I went home with him. Actually, he was from Selma, really, which is right next door. Right, one. yeah. And I went home with him one weekend, and I was born and raised in this country. Now, I'm talking in the 50s, okay? When I went home with him from Jacksonville on a weekend, I didn't know what racial prejudice was till I got there. Yeah. It was bad. Yeah. Is yeah. it still that way? Well, you know, it was interesting in that when I was growing up on the plantation in Alabama, the laws were against black Americans at the time, mm -hmm. but uh, you didn't hear them complaining about it as much, you know. They were, they were not trying to blame white folks for their problem. They were, they were not teaching us to hate white people, but they taught us to work hard and respect people and, and do the right thing. And with those principles, you can make it in this country. Mm -hmm. Unlike today, you know. Uh, they, when did this change? Uh, during the Civil Rights Movement, uh, when uh, Dr. King and others started the Civil Rights Movement, that's when the change started. In did the it get out of hand? It's out of control. Yes, sir. Absolutely. I often out of control. thought, I didn't think Dr. Martin Luther King really was as bad as he's been portrayed. Right. Am I right? I think that, uh, you know, I have uh, tons and tons of books on Dr. King, his speeches and his writing, and I have the utmost respect for him. I think that when he was uh, assassinated, Jesse Jackson and uh, Maxine Waters and others took his message and they perverted it for their own personal use. Really? To gain power and wealth. Um, the Rainbow Coalition. Uh, uh, yeah, the Rainbow Coalition, the NAACP, the Black Caucus, uh, the so-called civil rights leaders. Uh, a couple of examples, Dr. King said that one day black Americans would be judged by the contest of character and not color. Well, Jesse Jackson and others took that message and perverted it, and today blacks are judged by their color because most of them lack character. Mm -hmm. You know, blacks are, most blacks are suffering not due to racism, but the lack of moral character. And uh, they are that way because the civil rights, so-called civil rights leaders want them angry, dumbed down, and demoralized so that they can use them to gain power and wealth. And also the, uh, the liberal... Say that again? <laughs> I want the people yeah. to hear that. Well, they want them demoralized and angry, dumbed down, so that they can use them for power and wealth. And anyone, whoever caused you to become angry, they also control you. And so Jesse Jackson and the other control blacks by keeping them angry. With one word, and that word is racism. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. You can't make it because of the white man. You can't make it because of slavery. And blacks automatically re react to that because they're in a, like a hypnotic trance and under that one word, racism. And also the uh, liberal... You don't have a popular message, do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm surprised, but I, I'm real surprised about that, too, because I thought that when black Americans heard this message, that they were going to be happy to hear it, because when they understand that they need to forgive and take back their own life, then in this country you can do whatever you want. But they've been lied to for so long, they've been told that it's somebody else and not them, that anybody that comes along and tells the truth, you're hated for it. I've been called nigger and Uncle Tom, a sellout. I've had guns drawn on me. You know, I have, I've had my telephones tapped. I now have to travel, take someone with me when I travel around for protection because they hate me because I tell the truth. And this is, I'm talking, talking about, about black the, people. They had yeah. muckety mucks. Yeah. Really. And not just the leaders, you know. Uh, you would be surprised at the number of black preachers who are, are racist in their hearts. Uh, they, are, they are not called by God, but they've been called by their mama. And so they're using people to gain power and wealth. You could travel around the is country. Is money again? The money is everything. Uh, you could travel around the country. You see huge churches in the inner cities. But everybody in the city, uh, most of the people around the area is going to hell. You know, they're, they're having babies out of wedlock. Most of them are not, uh, they hate one another. Uh, black men and women, for the most part, don't get along. You know, she hates him because he's weak, and he hates her because she's angry. Uh, you know, been passed on from mama to girlfriend to wife. Didn't I read, I read it today in some news release that L.A., especially the Watts area, is expected to be the leading homos uh, homicide murders in the, the United States this year. Mike That's correct? right. Since this year alone, there's been over 600 murders. That's what I read. In South Central Los Angeles. It's just in that area there. They're, the Bloods are now killing the Bloods, and the Crips are killing the Crips. They have turned on each other, and they're fighting over turf. And at one point, it used to be the Bloods against the Bloods, against the Crips, mm -hmm. and the Crips against the Blood. Now they have turned on each other, and that's what Eva does. What? What caused that, though? Uh, uh, several things. First is not having fathers in the home. For the last 40 years, the government has been the daddy of the family. Mm -hmm. You know, the government, for the most part, is anti-God, anti-family, and anti-country. And then uh, uh, Jesse Jackson and others have told blacks that it's not them, it's, it's the white man. So they're angry about that. But what's most important is that the media can't report it anymore because if the media report was happening in the black community, the crime in the black community, they're accused of being a racist. And then the police well, officers her, her, can't That come don't in. make sense. Truth is truth, isn't That's it? That's right, but they don't love truth anymore. They hate the truth. They love the lie. Well, is the... You just hit one of my pet peeves because I get so mad at the television industry for not standing up for the truth. That's right. Is the Bucks controlling that truth getting out to Well, they have been intimidated by Jesse Jackson, threats of boycotting and lawsuits and things like that. And they don't want to go through those type of uh, actions. And they have cowered down to that. That's why they don't report it. Really? Yeah. So it's, this stuff been going on. Uh, 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 black on black crime has not stopped in Los Angeles. You just don't hear about it because uh, the, the the media can't report it for fear of being called a racist. You know, I had an office in Washington D.C. back in the '60s. You probably read about it in my book. Yeah. But it was on the corner of 18th and L. You go down L Street to 12th Street, and you didn't go over there after 6 o'clock at night when yeah. it got dark, or you weren't going to come back. <laughs> you know, and they well, talk, and that's our nation's capital. Yeah. It hasn't changed. That's right. That's right. It's like that in most of the inner cities. You know, I've been traveling around the country for the last 13 years or so, and there are places like Detroit, which is ran by black people. I want to remind you of that. The city councils are black, the police chiefs are black, everybody in the mama are black, and I'm afraid to go in those areas at night because of the crime. They don't care about life at all. Period. That was one of the reasons, or well, the primary reason I started the organization Bond. Uh, it's a nonprofit organization, Brotherhood, Organization of a New Destiny. And our purpose is to rebuild the family by rebuilding the man. Uh, the average black man, not all, 
but the average black man isn't worth a dime. And that is because... What do you mean by that? They, they don't have a, a sense of uh, a direction in life. They're out of control emotionally. Uh, uh, they're angry you know, because their fathers haven't set good examples. What we have to realize is that there's a spiritual order to life. And that order is God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman, and woman over children. And when you break that order, you're going to have confusion. Man out of the way. Man out of the way. And what they did 40 years ago, they told the black man, we're going to pay you back for slavery. We, uh, you've been done wrong. We're going to pay you. But you can't have it unless you take the fathers out of the home. And, and that's when that... I that's remember that in Baltimore and Washington broke loose 40 that's years right. ago. That's right. And it, you can look at your personal life. Whenever you don't love your father, then you're going to have an awful life. You're not going to have a good life. Because the father, whether we realize it or not, represent God on earth. He is not God, but he is his representation. And so when we love our fathers, we, we, as we get older, we, we draw closer to God. But when we hate our fathers or we are turned away from our fathers or didn't he know who he turn, was that's right we turn away from god so the average black man has no relationship with his father and that's why he's out of control how did you escape this well i grew up without my father uh in in in, in the home and i remember as a kid i had a longing for my father it was like something was missing in my life and i knew as a kid that i wanted my dad but my father got my mother pregnant uh, at an early age, and when she told him about it, he denied it. And she became very angry at him. And from that point forward, she wanted nothing to do with him. She married my stepfather before I was born. But, and whenever I would ask her, where's my dad? You know, why don't my dad come and get me? She would say, don't talk about him. He's no good. He doesn't love you, right? And as a kid, I thought my mother was mean, because I couldn't understand why she would get upset at me whenever I would ask about my father. And so I grew up not knowing it, but I resented my father because he wasn't there, and my mother who resented my father. And as you know, when you hate somebody, you become like what you hate. Mm -hmm. You take on the spiritual identity of the person that you hate. Mm -hmm. So I became like my mother, very emotional, very doubtful. I had insecure, I couldn't make decisions. You know, my life was out of control. And I moved to California, I ended up on drugs because I had so much guilt from resenting my, my mother and my father because God said that we should honor our parents. It doesn't mean that we have to accept what they have done to us, but don't hate them for it. Because when you hate, you're playing God, and when you play God, you're going to suffer. You know, we can discern, but we can't judge, we can't hate. And so I, I had a lot of conflict within myself, and I tried to get rid of it by using drugs and having a lot of women, and that stuff didn't work for me. And still so, had the gun hole. That's right. I, <laughs> I still felt that emptiness, yeah. like something was missing. Mm -hmm. And so I started to look for the truth. I'm like, something's wrong with me. You know, how can I get over this? And I went to some of the churches in Los Angeles, and instead of them telling me how to get over it, they said it was racism, it, it wasn't me, it's the white man. And so I started hating white people. Because I couldn't understand why they were trying to hold me Should back. Should we break from music here and I leave? <laughs> <laughs> I'm over it now. Okay. Me. <laughs> and long story short, uh, when I started hating white people, my life fell to an all-time low again. I got worse instead of getting really? better. And so I'm thinking, wow, I'm worse off now than I've ever been in my life. And I wanted to know the truth. You know, yeah. I wanted to know how to get over this. And so I'm riding in my car one day. And I write about this in my book, too, but I'm riding in my car one day, and I'm thinking, wow, how can I get over this emptiness that I have? And I turned my radio on, and I heard a, a Jewish minister say, if you want to know God, if you want to know the truth, when you pray, just be still and know the truth. He said, you don't have to be wimping and whining and begging that God already know your heart. And so I'm desperate at this moment, right? So I go home that night. And I sat in my room just quiet, and I wanted to know the truth. How old were you then? I was 38. Okay. And so right away, God revealed to me that I hated my parents. And up until that point, I didn't know I hated them, you know. And I, uh, he showed me that I hated them. And when I saw that, I wept. I felt so sad about it because I realized my parents had done the best that they could do. And also that the anger I had for them was holding me back in life because when you... When you're angry, you can't see clearly. 
you know, the truth looked like the lie and the lie looked like the truth to you. And so I felt real bad about that. And I knew I had to apologize to them. So, uh, because God said, when you forgive others, he will forgive you. That's right. You know, you know, even if they don't forgive you, you forgive them and God will forgive you. So I'm 38. I went to my mother. She came to California to visit her sister. And I went to her. And I have to tell you, the closer I got to my mother, fear would just overtake me. I could barely breathe. You know what I'm thinking? Why what do you I... mean? Is the closer you the, trying to reach spiritually the, the, to her? Or... No, the closer I got to the house. Oh, physically? physically. Yeah, physically to the house. Because, really? Yeah, I wanted to tell her that I was sorry for hating her all those years, right? Mm -hmm. And But I, I became afraid uh, of telling her these things because and then I realized that when I was growing up, whenever I tried to be honest with my mother, she would make me doubt myself. You know, like, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. And most, I don't know about white mothers, but most black mothers are like that. Hey, there's I a just, lot of white mothers. Like I was just going to say, you lot. guys don't have a patent on this thing. No, <laughs> they don't let their children speak up at all. They don't mm -hmm. let them tell the truth. They don't let them disagree with them. And so I realized my mother had taken away my courage. And so I get in the house. I'm nearly out of breath. And I told her I needed to talk to her. So we went into the room. And I said, all of my life I resented you because you tried, you hated my dad. Whenever I would ask about him, you tried to make me hate my father. And I said that I'm sorry for that because I realize now you can help it. Plus, it has held me back in life. And for the first time, my mother told me about her life and exactly what she had done to me, her mother had done it to her. Oh, really? Yeah, and I had never known that because I thought my grandmother walked on cloud. You know, I thought she was the best person on earth. Mm -hmm. But she had done it to my mother, and my mother passed it on to me, and it goes on it from generation. It goes on and on and on. That's right. From How did you break the cycle? Well, when I told my mother that I was sorry for hating her, then God forgave me. You know, and all the fear, the doubt, the worry, the insecurity, that void I had, it all left. And God gave me peace. And uh, 13 years have gone by. And I've dealt with more hell in the last 13 years than I ever had to deal, deal with. And I still have perfect peace within. In other words, it hasn't been an easy ride. It's been fun, but not easy. But if you hadn't done this, you'd have probably given up and said, oh, the, If the I right. had not forgiven my parents, mm -hmm. I'd probably be dead today. Why? Because I was on drugs. I was a low life. You know, I was literally in hell. I was very insecure. I didn't know what I wanted to do in life. And I'd probably be dead today had I not forgiven my mother. But when I forgave my parents, and I had to talk with my father too, when I forgave them, God forgave me. And I thought, wow, this is great, because I didn't know that was going to happen. And I said, wow, this is why black people are suffering. It is not racism. It's due to not having a good father and mother to guide you in the right way to go. And from that, we started Bond. Well, you got a message for a lot of men that's yeah. watching this tonight. Yeah. I know lots of them that just don't know what's wrong with them, and you're the, telling them. The problem is they've been turned away from their fathers by their mothers. And when that happens, they get turned away from God. That's right. And they right. don't have nothing to do with God. That's right. When you don't love your father, whether you're a good man or a bad man, but when you don't, and this is for girls too, right. when you don't love your father, you're going to have a terrible life, and you would never know God. I don't care how much you read the Bible, because everybody and their mama in the black community go to church. But yet the community is screwed up, and it's because they hate their fathers. They've been deliberately turned away. You cannot love God, who you've never seen, and hate your father, who you see all the time. And you see, you see God, because he is our heavenly father. You see him in the same light that you see your earthly father. Yes, ma'am. That's right. You know, the we way you feel about your father yeah. is the way you're going to feel about God. Mm -hmm. And see, it's so sad, too, because um, uh, not all, of course, but a lot of women, they, they have this envy of men. You know, they, and, and what they sadly do is to, in their anger, they take their children and turn them away. They put the focus on them rather than keeping the focus on the father. Uh, because they are so mad at their father because he's weak. You know, or he's not there for them in the right way. And so the, the mothers tend to take that anger out on her children. And some of them don't realize how they're setting their kids up to fail in life. And some of them know what they're doing, but many don't understand what they're doing. You know, I'm sitting here thinking, everything you described is 
is part of our problem with our welfare system. Yes. But I'm convinced that the government wants people on welfare. They do. Well, see, we have to understand that this warfare that we're dealing with is a spiritual warfare. Yes. It's not whites against it, blacks or blacks against It's anti-God. That's right. It's good versus Christ. evil. And there are those people out there that represent evil. Evil is working through them. Uh -huh. And there are those that good is working through them. God is working through them. And so they come together and they go head to head. And if you don't have a strong belief in God, you're going to lose. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand this warfare that you're dealing with, I never knew until I forgave my parents that there was another way to see things. You know, I, I read about it, I heard about it, but when I forgave my parents and God forgave me, He allows me to see in a different way. I can see this spiritual warfare. I see what I'm dealing with. And by seeing what I'm dealing with, I'm protected from it. And that's why we must be born again. That's why we need to know, really, not just in word, but we need to be born More of the Spirit. More than just shaking the preacher's hand. That's right. Is that what you're saying? That's right. We need to be born of the Spirit so mm -hmm. that God can work through us for the good. But most people just studying the Bible and hooping and hollering, they have not been born of the Spirit. And, and, and then preachers are so out to lunch or dumbed down or don't know what they're doing that they're not pointing the right way to the people. You know, they, they don't tell them the truth because if you tell, two things happen when you tell people the truth. They don't come back, which means you're not going to get a lot of money for your church. Mm -hmm. Or... Come on. <laughs> <laughs> or if you tell them the truth, they're going to hate you. Mm -hmm. You know, and the preachers don't want that. They'd rather have the big churches. They'd rather keep the people coming back. So they Welcome to prime you. time. <laughs> <laughs> we live this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so we started the organization to wake all people up to this, uh, this uh, understanding, but especially black people, because if black Americans don't wake up, take back their own lives, and, 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 and love God with all their heart, soul, and might, we're, in, we're headed for a situation that we will not be able to handle in this country. What do you think that situation is? I believe that we're going to have a, a, a race war. I do, too. Yeah. I, 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 Unless, I see it coming and out. I, because the white community is just as dumb, dumb, dumb. Yes. They go to church, they play church, right. but they ain't church. That's right. A, a white community also have allowed themselves to be intimidated. You know, if you disagree with black people, you're a racist. If you disagree with affirmative action or welfare program, you're a racist. So they are cowed down, not realizing that they are cowering down to evil. And so the same destruction that has destroyed mm. the black community is now destroying the white community. If you notice, the attack is on the white man. The white man is a racist. The white man hates women. The white man want to control everything. And what they're trying to do is to turn him away from his family so they can usher in the government and do the same thing that they've done to the black community. You know, before asking this next thing, anything that... I'm going to kind of shift gears on anything that we think we've left out yeah. from the woman's <laughs> He's standpoint. Good. He's doing real Isn't good. it good? You know, you're being defended by a friend of mine, Larry Clayman. Yes. What, what's this all about? A um, couple of things. Every year we hold what we call the uh, National Day of Repudiation of Jesse Jackson. We have Say a, that again. <laughs> it's a National Day of Repudiation of Jesse Jackson. Really? Yeah. You know, God said that we should rebuke and, re, and repudiate, you know, people who are wrong. The and, way his actions have proved that. Yeah. Jesse Jackson called himself a, a reverend, mm -hmm. which is misleading, you know, because young blacks who are listening to this man, they think, well, it's okay to sin. He's doing it, you know, having sex out with other women. Jesse Jackson cheated on his wife. He made a baby in that relationship. He has no shame about it at all. Uh, Jesse no. Jackson is not at all. No, he can care less. Right. He is a racist demigod. Uh, Jesse Jackson, Jackson is evil. And he's been able to get away with this for 40 years, protected by the media you know, and stuff like that. And, and many other black preachers. Jesse Jackson can walk into the Avis black church right now and get a standing ovation. The blacks have no shame at all. You know, 70% 70, 70 of black babies are born out of wedlock. 70% of black babies are born out of wedlock. There's no shame about it. When I was growing up in Alabama, if a black woman got pregnant out of wedlock, it was an embarrassment to the family. Even when my mother got pregnant, she didn't marry my father, but she married my stepfather. 
so that she can take away the shame of being pregnant out of wedlock. But now they have baby showers, they invite people over, no shame at all. That's happened in the white community. Yeah, it's happening there too, that's right. But I, I, deal, I deal with all people, but I'm trying to wake up the black community because most people are afraid to tell black people the truth. If a white man tells black people the truth, then oh, he's just a racist. Change the channel. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and the preachers, most of them are not going to tell the truth. The, the public schools are screwed up, so somebody got to tell the truth. And uh, so we hold this national day of repudiation. What is that lady who was on the city council, run for vice president, a black lady from Los Angeles? She's kind of in the same category you are, trying to get people over. She was one of my guests here. Oh, yeah. Outstanding lady. Well, I, the name doesn't come to me right I'll now. I'll think but, of it in a minute. Yeah. But I've well, only ever met two of you people in my life <laughs> who say, let's get the truth out. And I have to, I thank God for this because I was a coward. Before he changed my life, there's no way I would be doing what I'm doing today, really. So I, he gave me the courage by giving me perfect love. He took away the fear and gave me love, and I can't help His myself. His perfect love. His love, that's right. I cannot help myself. Well, well you're a walking, you're dead to this world already. That's what that's most right. Christians are, will not admit. That's right. If they're truly a Christian. Yes, sir. Most, you're absolutely most, most right. Christians are not dead to this world. No, they're but not. That's right. Not but I'm not sure all. they're Christians, honey. I have to tell you they're not, because mm -hmm. there's no way you can love God and love the world too. You know, be subject to the world, you know. Uh, you can't love good and evil. You either love one and hate the other. And the average Christian still love evil. And That's why we ended up with Bill Clinton twice. Yeah. You know, because he's an evil man, mm -hmm. and they love that. He's a big liar, and the bigger the lie is, the better, the, the more the people love you. Uh, so we hold this National Day of Repudiation. We're getting ready for our fourth annual National Day of Repudiation, a big rally in front of his Jesse Jackson Rainbow Push office in Los Angeles. We bring in speakers, we have picket signs, and we do it on Dr. King's birthday, Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday. That's got to be February. Uh, isn't it? January. January? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And we want to show the contrast between Dr. King's dream and Jesse Jackson's nightmare. Dr. King had a dream that black America would be judged by character and not color. Jesse Jackson nightmare that we're judged by our color. Dr. King said that because most blacks lack character. Two examples, 70% of black babies born out of wedlock today, no shame about it. Uh, since the early 70s, over 13 million black babies have been murdered inside the black woman's womb. Aborted? You don't hear, aborted. You don't hear an outcry about it at all. And we can't even get the preachers to get involved when we want to protest the clinics and things like that. They tell me, well, a woman has a right to her own body. Yeah. But what they're not telling them is that when a woman has an abortion, it destroys her. Yes, ma'am. It's murder. It sure does. And it, that is murder that they live with forever. That's right. They never get over it. I have never, ever talked to a woman who has had an abortion that got over it. That's right. And most of the abortion and they don't tell are in the black that. communities. They don't, because they don't want them to go free. They want to keep them down. It's fine. They make money off of it. Yeah. And so we hold this rally, right? And uh, Dr. Key said one day we'll become, we'll be one nation under God. Jesse Jackson's nightmare is that we are more divided than any other time in history. They keep us divided, blacks and whites divided, so that they can conquer. Uh, last year... You really believe that's going to happen? I believe that's... Well, that's reality. That's yeah. reality. It's, it's reality. Most, the average black person hate white people. And they the, literally the hate white people. The average white person is terrified of black people. Yes, ma'am. Really? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. I yes, was yes. raised in Virginia when I was a little girl, and um, they were my best friends. Yeah. You know? But I tell you, when I'm just out on the street and I'll say hello, they look at me like, are you nuts? That's right. Yeah. How are you going to overcome that? By telling the truth. Telling the truth and loving them. The way I got involved with Larry Klayman, who's a friend of mine, uh, last year in November, long story short, there was a meeting held in Los Angeles between Toyota Motors and uh, Rainbow Push, Jesse Jackson's organization. Jesse Jackson threatened to boycott Toyota. I remember that. You know, because some, they ran a commercial yeah. of a black guy with a gold tooth. Uh, on his, on I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't know why, because a lot of black folk wear gold too. I don't know why, but I would never wear gold in my mouth. But 
it seems to be a popular thing in some parts of the country. But and so Toyota caved in and uh, uh, decided that they were going to spend over seven hundred million dollars in the black community starting this year, and they were having a meeting about that and we were invited it was an open invitation i went there there were about 200 or so black people there mostly businessmen and women preachers and things like that jesse jackson was there and he and i ended up sitting right across from each other and i couldn't believe it i was like wow there is a god thank you god and uh jesse jackson got up and he said uh or somebody said the laws that the attorney general is passing to go after ben Laden." are really lost to go after the black leaders. You're kidding. And people applauded. Really? And, yeah. They applauded. And then they introduced Jesse Jackson Trade Bureau. And they said... Well, before you get away from that, were they basing that on the fact that the Muslims have made such an inroads into the black community, you reckon? I think that they were just lying to the people <laughs> okay. to keep them angry. <laughs> You know, okay. You know, uh -huh. it's, a, it's, a, it's another way of keeping them angry at America, okay. and especially white America. And so they introduced Jesse Jackson Trade Bureau, and they said that if you want to receive some of these benefits from these companies that they're doing this, you know, suing and stuff, they encouraged us to join his trade bureau. And according to how much money you make, you have to pay anywhere between 250 to 2,500 dollars a year. To Jesse Jackson organization, right? To be a part of it. Yeah, and people applaud it. Long story short, again, the guy from Toyota got up and he did about a 20-minute presentation about how they're going to be spending the 700 million. And then he opened it up for questions and answers. And so I raised my hand and I got up and I told him about my organization and I said, "We don't. We have never received one penny from the government, nor have we asked for a dime. We have a home for boys, you know, 13 and 25. Do you really? Yeah, that we're helping. We we show these some of these boys that are coming out of juvenile detention centers and places like that. But we show them how to overcome their anger. We show them how to work. They have to pay rent. And we show them how to get their life going. And I told them about our organization. And I said to him, "Is there any way we can go directly to you?" without having to go through Jesse Jackson or anybody that's And he's connected. sitting across the table from me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, anybody that's connected with Jesse Jackson. And when I said that, all hell broke loose. People started yelling and screaming at me and calling me nigger and stupid and telling me to sit down. Uh, I mean, it just, it, it was well, like... Though that's a good, why pay the middleman, that's what you're saying. Right, but they don't want you to go disagree with Jesse Jackson. That's what the problem is. And uh, 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 there was a, uh, a judge there, a black judge by the name of Greg Mathis. He has one of those TV shows. And he screamed from across the room at me, sit down. You've been watching too much Bill O'Reilly. I can't believe you. Sit down. And so I told him. Well, I, have, I happen to watch some of his <laughs> debates on this, too. <laughs> I said, well, at least I'm not watching your boring show. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been a good piece. <laughs> and it got worse for me when I said that. And at that point, Jesse Jackson's son, Jonathan Jackson, came and sat behind me. He and some more guys trying to intimidate me. Mm -hmm. They blocked my walkway. And Jesse Jackson went back to the podium and he said that black conservatives are parasites. And whenever I shake the tree and the fruits fall to the ground, they're there to pick them up. And people applauded. Long story short, the meeting finally ended. I'm standing at the coffee table while my guy gives some information to Toyota about my organization. Jonathan Jackson came from across the room and he hit me because he was so angry at me. You know, I guess what happened with his father. What do you mean? Hit you just tapped her? No, he hit me. Like uh, that, huh? Yeah, and I'm like, you can't hit me. You know, what are you doing? And at this point, Jesse Jackson came over and started cursing me out. You know, just words that I can't repeat. Words that I wouldn't repeat if I was a sinner, you know. And uh, then Judge Greg Mathis came over. And he, Even if you weren't a preacher. That's right. <laughs> and Judge Mathis came over and he said, where's O'Reilly now? You know, you're always on Bill O'Reilly's show. Where is he when you need him? And people gathered around me. They were Why did he me. say that? Why did he say it? Because I'm on Bill O'Reilly's show a lot. Are you? Yeah. Uh, and Hannity and Combs. And, and I'm always exposing these people. Okay. I didn't realize that was you. Oh, yeah. People look different on TV, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go and watch it. You'll recognize yeah, it. Yeah, no. <laughs> and so... Because you're one of the ones that 
took on the Rainbow Coalition. That's right. On his show. That's right. And and they don't like that at all. Uh huh. And so they uh um, they they were threatening to kill me. And, I mean, just a bunch of people gathered around me, and they were cursing and screaming at me and threatening to kill me. And finally, someone said, "You better get him out of here before we kill him." Right. So my guy got me out. And as a result, I called my friend Larry Clayman from Judicial Watch and told him about what happened. And we also have this on tape. We have a lot of it on tape. And so we filed a, a civil rights lawsuit against Jesse Jackson, his son Jonathan, Judge Grant Mathis, and some of the other people there. And they have tried to get it thrown out, but the Superior Court of California refused to throw it out. And we are now waiting to go to trial next year. These but people are going to pay because they have no respect for uh, physical laws or spiritual law. Jesse Jackson and his friends are evil, they're mean. You know what, as a result of that, we started getting so many threats, I've had to up security around my office and around my home, and uh, once again, I have to take someone with me when I travel around, because they're mean, these people are mean, but they can't intimidate me, you know, I'm not afraid of them. I love what's right with all my heart and soul and might, and in this lawsuit, I want money, but I, most of all, I want to go to trial because I want Americans to see that they need to wake up, that these people are evil, and if they don't stand up against them with truth, we're all going to suffer for it. That's why Larry Clayman is trying to get his court his case against uh, Bill Clinton in the court. Yes. It's we not to win or anything else. It's to wake up America. America better wake up before it's too late, because if we, it's a spiritual warfare. It's not physical. It is spiritual, and we are in the greatest country in the world. There's no other country like this country. That's why we are under attack right now, because we are a Christian nation, we support Israel, or we are a free country, and our enemies don't like it, mm -hmm. and they want to destroy that. And so we need to wake up before it's too late. Well, you got quite a message. Yeah. You know, I'm also, I mean, there's so much more going on. One other thing I can tell you about is I'm also doing a speaking tour to stop reparations, you know. This thing about. Uh, yeah, you know, blacks are still begging for more money, right? And I'm against reparations because it is racist, it is divisive, uh, it's another way for the so-called black leaders to use black Americans to gain power and wealth. They'll get this money. Jesse Jackson even said that the money won't necessarily go to the people, but to their organizations. So I can't help but wonder if he's talking about his organization and his friends, right? And so uh, I'm on a speaking tour to get white Americans and black Americans to stand up against this because... What can we do? First of all, we can call our uh, uh, um, representatives and tell them that if this should come up to, to vote on, do not vote on this kind of thing because it's not fair that working class citizens of this country should have to pay for something. Wait a minute, I didn't know. To is that going to come up before Congress? I, I believe that it will. Really? You know, I'm surprised that it is, is, has gotten as far as it got because it's so ridiculous. But yet, in Chicago, the city councils of Chicago passed a bill that any private, any company that want to contract with the city, it, uh, white companies will have to open up their books so that the city council, council can see if they earn money from slavery. If they and so if so, they're going to be slavery. Yeah. That's crazy, but they have a law like that right now in Chicago. And so it's going to happen because yeah, the people Go back and see if they were in business during, during slavery. I don't understand it. It's crazy. It's yeah. evil. Uh -huh. But because Americans won't stand up, these kinds of things will continue to happen. I did a debate. The National Association of Black Journalists invited me to Milwaukee to debate this issue. And I debated a man by the name of Michael Eric Dyson. He is a black professor from the University of Pennsylvania. There were about 300 or so black journalists there from across the country. Michael got up and he said, we, they owe us, we built this country, they should pay us. And they applauded him, they loved him. And I thought that the journalists were going to be fair and balanced, right? Mm -hmm. But they took sides with Michael. And I got up and I said, I'm against it because it's racist, it's wrong. If they want reparations, they should go to Africa and ask the African nations and the Arab nations to pay them because they're the one that sold them to the Arabs. Yeah, you know? the Arabs are the one that made the money. <laughs> That's right. And I said what we need are fathers and mothers to get married and guide their children in the right way to go. And then we will have a better black family and black community. They booed me. They called me the white man's boy. 
They called me names. I was attacked in ways that was absolutely amazing. And then Michael Dyson later wrote about me in the Chicago Sun-Times. He said, if you ever wonder what a self-hating black man who despises his own culture and worships at the altar of whiteness look like, take a gander at the Reverend Jesse Lee Peterson. Really? These people are evil. I'm telling you, we are, we are, you know, Is I never thought. Is there anybody else out there like you? <laughs> Um, yeah, there. I, I, I'm sure there are. You know, you have Justice Clarence Thomas. Yes, you know, he's yes. there. And when he first heard about what I was doing, he invited me to Washington D.C. and he and I sat for an hour and a half in his chambers talking about what we were doing. You know, you have. Uh, uh, um, there are others there. You just don't hear about them because the media tend to the media won't let you right, hear about stay them. away from them. But kind there like, are other blacks out there doing the same thing. Kind of like the truth from Israel. Yes. You're not going to hear it. That's right. That's right. But we have to get this message out that we got to forgive so that we can get true power from God. We got to stand up for, for what is right before it's too late because when we lose America, there is nowhere else to go. That's right. Everybody and their mama is trying to come here. Nobody's trying to leave. I wrote an article that says, instead of reparations, how about a free ticket back to Africa? Are you the guy who wrote that? <laughs> yeah. I saw that. <laughs> and I haven't had one person accept that offer yet. You know, because we are in the greatest country uh -huh. and we got to stand up. This is, God gave us America. I am an American. I'm not Afro-American. I am 100% American. Somebody told me the other day this term Afro-American was one of, uh, originated with the uh, Jesse Jackson group. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. They called, they, we've been called, what, what have we been called? Negro, colored people, now we're African, -American, African Americans. And what they're doing is they do that to turn blacks away from America toward Africa. <coughs> and, you know, and, and that's why they're doing it. It's another way of manipulating and using blacks to gain power. You know, you wrote a book. Yes. I want to talk about this book because this book can go further than this television station. Yes. And this television program is only going to be two hours long but this one can go into many many people who believe in what you're saying tell us something about your book well what I, the, uh, from rage to responsibility I have to tell you this I, I have a high school education I'm not very educated but because I love was right with all my heart soul and might God had just opened up it, opportunities that absolutely blows my mind you know that's why I, I don't read a lot but when I got a copy of your book I couldn't put it down because I'm reading how your life went from one thing to another one to another one to another one and I'm so inspired by that because that's how my life is working right now and in this book I lay out uh, in a simple way how people can overcome no matter what color you are male or female how you can overcome and why you have it's to overcome. It's a message to all of us. To all people. To all people. And I'm, uh, I, I talk about what happened in the black community and why it happened, who did it, why they did it, so that all Americans, blacks and whites, can understand what went wrong so that they can finally wake up and, 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 and do the right thing and take back our families and back our country. You know, you made a comment a minute ago <clears throat> that they called you, what, the white man's boy? Yes. But in reality, what you are is you are loving the black man so much. That's right. You He's want him to diet. know the truth. That's right. And that is the only thing that's going to help him. It is the only thing that helps any of us. And it doesn't make any difference what color we are, that's right. what sex we are, anything else. What you're speaking is the, the truth. truth. The truth. Period. It's, it's a truth that set me free. And it's the a truth, truth that's going to set, gonna set anybody else free. And it's going to have to be the truth. Or I change the subject on you because I'm going to come right back to that. This book is 1995. We just found out about this book, and so we just got on the computer and ordered some. So if you want some, you can call and place your order and get them. Yes. And I'll be getting, I mean, I had a woman who called me up, a white woman, who was a, 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 a member of the national organiza organization of women who hate men mm -hmm. and she said that she all of her, all of her life she she thought abortion was right 
She thought it was fine, but when she read my chapter on abortion, it changed her whole heart and mind really? about abortion. Now she, she sees that it's not a good thing. Can I ask you a question? Have you ever spoke down in this part of the, what it's I call the real work. conservative Bible Belt area of West Texas, New Mexico and all that? I was in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico last weekend, as a matter of, oh, weekend before last. But I've not been down in this area yet. Well, we go into Albuquerque area, and it's a little more, it's since I'm a New Mexico, and <laughs> <laughs> since we were born in New Mexico, yeah. we can find, pick on them a little bit, okay? Yes. They're a little liberal up yes. there in that area. Sorry, but you people up there know that. And uh, They're not sorry. <laughs> but uh, I find here, this is what I wanted to tell you. I can go into a supermarket anywhere, and I am so pleased, because I'm a pretty raunchy, old, conservative, white-haired man, that so many people, black people, will stop me and speak to me. Yes. And that pleases me because that means I'm not a racist. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And I think we're making progress as a group of people together doing what God's called us to do. I believe that. You know what it is. You have the elitist blacks like the NAACP and Louis Farrakhan, Jesse Jackson, and a lot of these black professors and a lot of these black preachers who are racist at the top. And then you have the radical blacks at the bottom there, like Louis Farrakhan and the New Black Panther and Party and all those people who literally hate America and hate white Americans. And then you have the, the blacks in the middle who really want to do the right thing but can't figure out how to get back to it. And these groups are using these people to further their cause. And they're doing all they can to keep the truth away from these people because they know that if the people in the middle were to grab hold of the truth, they're all going to lose. These people are going to end, the ones at the top and the bottom are going to end up on welfare themselves. And so they don't want the truth to get to it. That's why when, when black Americans hear you telling the truth or anybody who is bold enough to just tell the truth, a lot of them grab hold of it because they're not hearing it all the time. I've come to the conclusion, Jesse, that I'm 70 years old. Most of my life, I've been lied to even about what religion, I hate that word, but what it really supposed to be. Yes, that's right. I understand that. You understand that's, it well, don't when you? When I woke up 13 years, when I was uh, born of the Spirit, and not and got over being religious, I couldn't believe how I'd been deceived. And I, I, I couldn't believe the lies that I'd been told and, and how I had been manipulated and used by the religious group. You know, so I, I understand. Even now, it just made me want to tear up, you know, and tears want to come when I realize how people are being controlled by religion. And, you know, Christ came to set us free from religion. He said that we should be born of the Spirit. And it is not happening for the most part today. Can I ask you a question? Yes. When that happened 13 years ago, and you went to your mom, and you told her you were sorry. Yes. How did your relationship with God change? God the Father. What happened? Uh, that's a, I love that question. When, when, when he forgave me, and I forgave my mother, and God forgave me, I have total trust in God. I have no doubt, at, it's not even in my thinking anymore to doubt him. And over the last 13 years, I've never had to plan anything. You know, he, he established my, my way, you know, he allows me to see. And every day he made my days work, you know, he, he shows me what his will is instead of my will be done. And uh, I, I'm free, I, you know, I'm free and I trust him without any doubt. It's just not even part of my psyche anymore. You got a father, God. You understand? So what, tell him what you, you're trying you, to say. You got to know God the Father. Yes. Before that, was Jesus in there anywhere? Well, I had I had read about Jesus and God. I had studied the Bible about them. I had all the knowledge of Him. You know how when I was reading your book, I read about you, but I didn't really know you. I'm getting to know you now. And so prior to that, I didn't have a personal relationship, what the Bible called personal relationship, with Christ, you know, with God and Christ. But now I have that 
personal relationship with them. Well, see, actually what happened to him was the same thing that happened to me. But I was raised, and I love Jesus. Yes. You know, I just loved him. That's and, right. And I see that all over the place. But had no relationship with God the Father. That's had right. Had a major problem with him. Not at all. And when I got things straightened out really with him, then I got to have a relationship with my dad. Not before then. And then, after all that happened, uh, it hit me how Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, the life. That's no right. No man gets to the Father except through, through me. That's right. And that meant he's the gate. He's not the stopping point. We're trying to get to the Father. And so I am finding all over the place just what you're saying. All of these people that have so many problems in their lives, everything about their life, and it all is stemming from that lack of relationship with their father. That's right. Their Which where it goes father to the two. That's, mm -hmm. right. That's right. Is right behind that. <laughs> mm -hmm. The one thing that I am sure of and have no doubt about is that if we could get men and women of all color, all races, all ages, whatever, to really start loving their earthly father, mm -hmm. then they'll be able to find Jesus and go to the father, mm -hmm. the real father. But if they don't forgive their earthly father, they're never, ever, ever going to find Christ or God. That's why the attack is on the man. Mm -hmm. You know, if you notice in society today, they try to make the male look like he's stupid. We look at these movies, he look like the dummy because they want to degrade him mm -hmm. because of his relationship, his spiritual relationship with that order of God. And, and if, that, if that one gets messed up, they're all messed up. It's all messed up. They are all messed up. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Isola was her name. Isola Foster? Yes. Yeah, a good friend of mine. Is she? I know her very well. She was one, most out, one of the most outstanding <laughs> ladies ever had sit in that seat right there. Yes, yes. Because she's seen the same thing you were saying. Yes. But she wasn't popular and she's hated in L.A. That's right. He's only been burned out. She used to live in South Central. And when she first started out, they burned her home down. Aww. You know, she's gone through a lot. And uh, uh, we were a close friend and I have the utmost respect for her. Well, this caller says you would make a great team with her. Oh, we've done a lot together. <laughs> together? Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know what we, I'm going to, I got an idea, okay? A lot of people, when I see them in the cafes or on the street, after I have a guest like you, they'll say, why didn't you ask him that question? What question? <laughs> right. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to open the phones up for you to ask questions. And uh, I asked Jesse if he would like to even talk to you on the phone back and forth, okay? Now, if you get... Uh, he said, yeah. <laughs> if, if you get really out of hand, he may hang up on you, but that's his privilege. But uh, I think we need... One way we get to know each other is by talking to each other, right? And one of the callers who really does want to talk directly to you, she's, ta she's asking exactly what I was asking yeah. you about, which was, hate your father, can never love God. She wants to know why you made this statement. Okay. Well, well I made the statement because um, when you read the Bible, the spiritual order that God has ordained, and that order is God in Christ, Christ in uh, man, man over woman, and woman over children. And so on this earth, in the family, uh, the man, the father, is representing God. Mm -hmm. God is working through him. And when we, when the wife and the children look at the father, the earthly father, they should see God in him. They should see Christ in him. They should see a patient man, a man who is honest and fair. A man uh, who, whom his wife respects. And when the children look up and see that, they're going to love the earthly father. You know, why they're small, right? And when they love the earthly father, then they're loving who he loves. He loves God. And when they grow Because he couldn't do it if he didn't love God. No way at all. That's right. It can't be done of itself. Of ourselves, we can do nothing. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and then when they grow of age, then they go out on their own. Then they find the, the true God for themselves because the earthly father kind of kept them, you know, on that path. They still may venture off a little bit, but not too far away because they love their earthly father. Mm -hmm. It's the spiritual order that, when you read the scriptures, you can see that order that God has ordained. And uh, well, so- his big commandment, honor your father honor and mother. Your fa that's right. And if you don't, you're gonna suffer. Whether we like it or admit it, 
you're going to suffer. Well, God is kind of like that. And all of the things that he put in there, and he told us, this is good for you. Yeah. This That's is right. bad for you. That's right. He wasn't kidding. And, one and it thing, doesn't matter if we don't understand why. That's right. And the one thing about God, He is not going to force us to do anything. That's right. He He have laid out His spiritual law. He has ordained that family. And if we don't follow it, we'll just suffer and die. He won't force he won't, us to be happy, he will won't. He? That's right. <laughs> He'll let us live on a skid row right. until we decide we want to turn back to Him. You know what? Let's do, for Director, if we can do this, okay? Let's, um, the control room put up, call in with your questions if you could, please. But if we can, let's take a quick song break. That'll give, because people aren't going to call as long as we're talking. Okay. Okay? Yeah, we do want to take calls. And we'll take a, a quick song break. We'll get our telephones hooked up here where we can talk to you if you want to talk to us. Make sure if you want to talk to us, you tell the phone partners. Teen challenges in there, so we got lots of phone partners. Tell them you want to talk on the phone, okay? And then we'll go from there. Can we go to the music? Okay. Go to your phone, and then we'll see what happens. Welcome back. Um, we're sitting here visiting with a very special guest, Jesse Lee Peterson. I got it right. Yes. <laughs> okay. And uh, it's one of the most interesting subjects I think that we've covered in quite a while around here. Because so many times 
We don't have people like you come by that often. Yeah. We're kind of like the plague. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you said uh, Larry Bates was one who recommended that you come here. Well, he had heard that I was coming. Uh, you know, um, I think somebody here heard him, heard me on mother, his show. Mother heard you oh, okay. on his show. Oh, yes. was it? And that's how she contacted you. Right. Mm -hmm. And I saw Larry last weekend in, in New Mexico, and he said, you know, he heard that I was coming. He's like, oh, man, you're going to the right place. He was so excited about it. Really? And uh, I also host a national radio show on his network. Information Radio Network there, uh -huh. Monday through Friday, and and that's how God works, you know. As one door closes, another one opens up for you, just one thing after another. One. Has your message being received? I can see why, you know. I'm excited for all the viewers here, and because we have a large Hispanic audience, yes. they got the same same problems. things happen to them. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and they're being sold down the river. Yes. And we're all being sold down the river for a one-world government, and we don't know it. That's right. That's right. And that's why we have to wake people up. That's right. Because people don't see what's going on around them, and we have to tell the truth. But has anything been happening on the phones? Well, Jerry called in. He's a black man that says he is proud that the truth is being told. Really? And uh, <laughs> he'd like to support your ministry. Oh, good. So we might need to get the... Put his address his up address if he could, up. control room. Yeah when you get a chance. Okay, and then we have a question for you. That's good. I'm glad people want to support you. Yeah, it happened. Nobody, there's nothing free. Free lunches went out about 15 to 20 years I'm ago. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Usually if you think it's free, it's really not anyway. That's, That's right. right. Okay, if the earthly father dies, you don't have a chance to make amends before he dies. Does that eliminate the chance for a relationship with the Heavenly Father? Good question. Yes, it is. It is if you don't forgive him. You still have to forgive your father even if he's dead. And this is how you forgive him. Um, you know, the Bible says that uh, we should know thyself, know thyself. The most powerful thing that a person can do is to know thyself. And I have to tell you, the average person doesn't know him or herself, have no clue at all, because they don't really pay attention for some reason to themselves. And once you get to know yourself, you realize that you have done things that you wish you had not done. You know, and you have said to yourself, you know, that was stupid. I would never do that again. I can't believe how crazy I was. How did I do that to my children or to my friend or whatever, right? And then time goes by and you find yourself doing it again, you know. And you think, how in the world did I do it? Then you start to realize well, I'm doing things that I don't want to do here, so it must not be me. And you realize that it's not you, but it's the sin or the spirit or something that's made a home it's inside of you. Yeah. It made a home in you, and it's driving you, making you do the things that you've done. And so if you can understand that about yourself, it will help you to understand that about your dad. That, yes, he was wrong with some of the things he's done, but I have to realize that it wasn't him. It was a, that spirit or that sin that made a home in him. And I wouldn't want someone to hate me for the things I do. My father surely don't want me to hate him for the mistakes he made with me. And if you can understand that, it will cause you to forgive your father who's gone on. So in other words, if I have that problem, if I sit down and say, God, I want to get this thing straight. Yes. He'll help you get it straight. Is that the, what you're saying? The moment... You admit that you have a problem without any excuses, that's when God is going to come forth and help you overcome. But if you say, oh, I have a problem and it's my husband's fault or my wife's fault or my children's fault, you're not going to find your way. But if you can say, I'm wrong, I don't know how to get out of this, but I have a problem, at that very moment you can start getting over it. Mm. But you can't borrow an excuse because the moment you borrow an excuse, you go back into denial. And God can't help us unless we can confess that we are wrong. And as long as you're looking at every problem that happens in your life as somebody else's fault, you're never going you're to be never going to be looking at yourself. That's right. You must keep your eyes on yourself. Look in the mirror. That's right. And when you look at yourself, you're going to see the world around you too. Mm -hmm. And you will see how to deal with the world around you in the proper way. But if you take your eyes off, off yourself, 
the world around you will overtake you. It will absolutely overtake you. Yeah. Jesse, you want to hear something funny? It's the first time I looked over at the monitor. Was you on there? Uh -huh. I have seen you. You don't look like this. <laughs> you look different in person. But, but that uh, phone number I'm looking at, it's a VOND, that's your ministry. Yes. The phone number is 323-782-1980. Yes. And the fax is 323-782-1980. What we have is an 800 number. There's, they can put an 800 number. You got an 800? Okay. Yeah, let them put the 800 number up so that it's easier for people to. We have a newsletter that we put out. And you got your email and a yeah. whole bit. We have we have a website that they can go to. You know what we don't have? The reason that 800 number is not? Can you give it to us? It is 1-800-411-2667. Uh, okay. Or uh, 411 411 bond B O N D. Okay, they'll get it in there then. You know, I saw a program a while back on this about uh, Planned Parenthood, and uh, one of its big purposes was to wipe out the black race. I write about that in my book. You're absolutely right. They Margaret, do. Yes. Margaret Sanger. Yes, and this this question is. Why do the black leaders support that? But I want you first to talk about that because I know you've got a good understanding of what Margaret Sanger was doing yes. and, and all of that. And then tell them why the black leaders are supporting that. Margaret Sanger, uh, uh, the founder of Planned Parenthood, was a racist, and, uh, a true racist. You could read her own writings was she and white? find it out. Yeah, she was a white yeah, woman. She was a white girl. A white woman. And her plan was to wipe out the underclass and in her mind at the time, the underclass were blacks, black people. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that she wanted to do it was by way of abortions. Mm -hmm. And so she started, founded, started the whole abortion movement in order to wipe out the underclass black people in her mind. Under the guise of Planned Parenthood. That's right. Really? Yeah. Yes, sir. And then it's so interesting, you hear, you have these, Jesse Jackson and others always crying racism from the white people. And yet here was a true racist it's still, it's still happening by way of Planned Parenthood, and you don't hear an outcry about that at all. Mm -hmm. Most of the abortion clinics are in the black community. Mm -hmm. I, I write about a young girl, amongst many. In your book? In my book, I write about, we, there's an abortion clinic around, abortion clinics around Los Angeles that we protest and try to shut down. A long story short, there was a young black girl, she was about 12 or 13 years old, going into the abortion clinic on a Saturday morning, and, and she was like six months pregnant. You can see that she was pregnant, right? And I said to her, you don't have to have an abortion. We will take care of you until the baby comes, and we will adopt the baby. And uh, she told me, well, it's too late now. Uh, she said that she had gone into the clinic on a Thursday morning, and they injected a saline solution. She thought it was some kind of saline solution into her womb. And they said it wasn't going to be a big deal, it's not a baby, you're not going to feel anything. Mm -hmm. And they injected that and she said for three days her baby was kicking and fighting inside Jaleel. of her womb. To live? Yeah, yes. because the stuff was burning the body and, and she said that on the third day the baby died. But when the baby died, it wiped her out mentally. And even today she's like in a comatose kind of a state of being because she has so much guilt. And I have stories after stories like that of young black girls who have had, I know girls who have had like 10 abortions. Oh my gosh. You know, and they're not even 25 yet. You know, just a, a, a way of just, uh, just, just a birth way control. It? And we can't get black, most black preachers to get involved in this issue at all. You're kidding. And Jesse Jackson supported it. And he's a preacher, or he called himself a preacher. And he supports abortion. Mm. Well, it's the same problems that you know, there's issues in the, the white community. There's a lot of them that don't want to talk about abortion. You yeah. know, that's controversial. It may hurt Sunday morning's offering. <laughs> that's right. But the people got to wake up. It is we, the people. We, these so-called leaders, whether they're preachers or politicians or civil rights leaders, they are not going to do what's right until we make them do what's right. We have to do it. it is, we, we have the power. And, and secondly, it's a mistake to have as someone as your leader. I don't have a leader. God is my leader. Christ is Amen. my leader. Amen. You know, I often ask, who is the leader of Jesse Jackson? 
who is the leader of Louis Farrakhan? And if they don't need a leader, why do I need one? You know, I don't need it because every time you let someone lead you, they're going to lead you straight to hell. They're going to take control of you. You know, it's a... Um this is probably not a favorite subject of people wanting to watch, but if somebody don't tell them, you know, I shudder when I read Ezekiel 33 about the judgment for the the watchmen who are not standing on the wall saying this is wrong. That's right. That's right. And yeah, that's why I appreciate you. You know, and, and we again we deal with all people, but. I, I guess because I'm black and, you know, this is what God has given me to do. He want me really to try to get the attention of black people. And I, I have to tell you, it is sad at the number of black preachers who are cheating on their wives and people know about it. They are having relationships with women in the church and people know about it. Uh, the number of homosexual preachers around town. Really? You can go to the average black church and look at the choirs, the different choirs that they have. and not all, of course, but most of the men and women in there are homosexuals. And the preachers don't deal with it at all. Uh, uh, crime is out of control, black on black crime. Everybody and their mom in jail now. Uh, they keep crying racism rather than dealing with the, the, the sin aspect of what's going on. And it's just sad how much we have allowed sin or evil to run our communities and not having a shame about it. And when someone stands up and, and speaks about it, rather than having an appreciation for it, they want to wipe you out. They want to stop you from saying it because they are so addicted to what is wrong and, rather than what is good. Uh, the relationship between black men and black women is so bad that I sometimes think it's going to take Jesus Christ himself to come back in person and restore it. The average black woman has no, re has no respect for the black man at all. She's talked down at him, she's cruel, and he can't handle it because that's how his mother was. And it just, things are real bad in the black community. When I read Deuteronomy 28, and it talks about the curses, mm -hmm. and that's what's happening in the black community right now. From one generation to another. From one generation to another. It is alive and well. And it has nothing to do with racism but everything to do with sin. Everything. They're dumbing us down for this one world government. I'm yes. convinced of that. Yes, sir. Over here on the FCC side, FCC side with these television stations. Yes. I read this garbage that comes out and, and uh, they are putting you into a position to where they're going to control. That's the, right. Right now, they can shut off every transmitter we got by a flip of a switch. And we don't control that. Yeah. Tell yeah. me that's America? We don't have the control that we think that we have. Most people think we have. Mm -hmm. I spoke to the United Nations, and uh, I just told the truth. I laid it out. And most of them gave me a standing ovation. Really? I was surprised. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm against the UN. I think we need to be out of the United Nations. It's an organization of godless people. Yes. And, and I think that we need to run them out of our country. Our tax dollars should not be going to the UN. We're the one that keeps it open. That's right. And they hate our guts. And they hate us. Yeah. yeah. What else you got, Amy? Well, this one wants to, to call in. Okay. Oh, talk good. To him. Good. Well, we'll. It's a little different twist to that honor your father and mother thing. Okay. And you know, I think that's why I appreciate you being here, Jesse. Not too many people are willing to take a stand for what they believe. That's right. And I think that's why we're hurting today. We are. That's right. Well, I can tell you one thing. When God gives you a purpose like this, yes. and it is the truth, and it is the so hard, people don't want to hear it, you are risking your life Yes. just because you are speaking the truth. That's amazing, huh? But you know what? <laughs> it, it, you have the most... You are so bold because when God gives that to you, He gives you that purpose That's and right. He's like, this is what I want you to do. That's right. you've, got, you've got to tell them. You can't back down from it or you're miserable. I can't help myself. That's I'm telling right. you, I literally you can't. cannot help myself. It's yeah. like, it's, it's there. It's who I am. Uh, it, it's like, I can't help it, you know. I, and I, I wasn't like this before, you know, so. That's that God relationship. <laughs> yeah. And anyway. I was a coward before, I'm telling you. 
I couldn't even stand up to women before. Really? I remember when I was doing a lot of dating, and whenever my girlfriend would get mad at me, I would just kind of cower down to her. Okay. Then I would try to buy her something to please her, you know, or because I didn't have the courage to even stand up to her. You know, That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. we have a very good uh, friend, he's an Orthodox <laughs> rabbi from Jerusalem that does a program with us. And he said something that made me think of what you were saying. He says, when God gives you a tune to play, and he gives every person a tune to play for something in this world. That's right. One play, note in his orchestra. That's one right. note. Play that note to the fullest extent you can. That's right. And that's what you're doing. That's what I'm doing. And I think that, uh, I believe that, I think we've got somebody on the line. Is that right? Yes, we have Sharon on the line. Okay. Oh, she's coming on the line. Sharon, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, can you hear? I can. Okay, Sharon, what's your question? Well, my question is more in the form of a comment, I guess, than uh, a question. But when I walked in, I heard uh, the brother discussing the uh, significance of the, uh, the uh, child forgiving his or her uh, father. Mm -hmm. My situation is that... Um, I did go through the process of forgiveness and wrote the letters and repented and begged and pleaded for, pleaded, uh, for forgiveness. Um, but the situation is that my mother is having problems forgiving me, forgiving me, forgiving her a hard birth. Um, when you were born? When I was born, she had very, very, very right. She had severe problems giving birth. And that's been more than 50 years ago. Really? Uh, it has affected the family in ways that you wouldn't imagine. Yeah. I have daughters and I have grandchildren. So our lives have been changed dramatically. Um, and and um, like I said, in ways that you would just not ever believe. I believe but, it. Is your mother still living? She is. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry that your mother put you through that by blaming you for her problems, right? But this is what you have to do. First of all, you have to forgive yourself because it's not your fault that she had to go through that. And then secondly, you have to realize your mother cannot help herself. She's very angry. And she was angry before you came into the world. I'm mm -hmm. sure she was angry at her mother. Do you know her mother? Did you ever know her mother? Um, her mother died giving childbirth to her youngest yeah. sister. See that? Mm -hmm. So what you need to do is realize that your mother is wrong in the way that she's dealt with that and just forgive her for it because she can't help herself. Don't ask her to forgive you because when you ask someone to forgive you, you put them in a God-like role. And uh, when we forgive others, God will forgive us. So just realize your mother's wrong. She can't help her. She's not overcome her anger. And just let it go and then you can be free. It's your choice to forgive her. Yeah, you got to forgive. You got to. Right. Oh, what it is, you got to uh, stop being mad at your mother for the way she have treated you. Well, I did. I went through that. I went through that for years and but years. Did you tell her that, though? No, no, no. Yeah. Did you tell her? Yes, I what, have. What did you say and, to and, her? But, but it's like you were saying. I was blaming myself because I right. was a sinner. She was a perfect mother, you know. She wasn't perfect. Anything. Well, I mean, as a child, that's what that's how you see. That's right. Your that's parents. Right. So that's I right. blame myself, you know, because I, I I got into sin and I rebelled and I I, I did all the wrong things. And you know why you Until did I it, became, right? Well, now I do. Why did you do it? Twenty years, twenty years into my salvation, I blame myself, and I have just come to realize what you were just saying that it was not me. That's right. You know, and, and all of the things that you're saying are true, and I realize that, but really, you know, there are people who are in the same situation and don't yeah. realize it. So that's why I wanted to call in and just kind of give a different... Um, this is what I want you to do, and you will go free if you do it this way. Okay. You realize now that you should not be, you should not resent your mother for the things she's right. done to you, right? So right. all you need to do is go to your mother and say, Mom, I'm sorry it was wrong for what you've done to me, but I'm wrong for resenting you for it. And when you can apologize for resenting her, that's when you're going to go free. Well, Don't well, write I've a letter. 
I've already done that. No, if you had truly done it, and don't expect anything from your mother. Don't expect oh, your okay. see. Right. Don't expect your mother to say, "All right, I'm sorry, too, daughter, for what I've done." Because most mothers won't set you free. She right. she'll say, "Oh, you're just mean. I can't believe you almost took my life." She'll right. make you feel guilty because and she. And then that's what has happened. That's yeah. exactly what has happened. She's but living I, off you. Exactly. Exactly, but. You but know, so don't expect anything from her. Just go to her to say, I'm sorry for holding these things against you. If she say, I'm sorry, daughter, that's fine. If she doesn't, that's fine. But you are sorry for holding it against her, and God's going to forgive you. Then you can go free. And just hold your tongue. It, right. It's not dependent on your mother to forgive you. If she curse you out, you just look at her with merry eyes twinkling, and don't take it personally. Just realize right. it's not right. her, but right. it's the hell that's inside of right. her. So well, we, don't react to her. I understand that. I understand everything you're saying. But basically, you know, it has just affected me. Of and course. it has affected innocent people, my children, my grandchildren. Yeah. It has affected us tremendously. Well, and go back to them and apologize. Go to your children and say, kids, I'm sorry for what I have done to you. I've done to you what my mother has done to me, and I was wrong, and I'm sorry. And it's never too late. That's right. And they can get over it just like that. Well, actually... You know, it, and it wasn't me. It was. It, it's been her, the same thing she did to me. She's done to my children and yeah. grandchildren. The Lord saved me and kept me from doing that to my children and grandchildren. Did Even she, though I've already gone to them and apologized. Did she I raise have, your kids or something? Um, for a while, she oh, did. Yeah. Yeah. Right until until I got saved, and then the Lord required of me. You know, because I thought, well, I'm the failure. She's a successful person. Yeah. You know, everything she said, I did. Everything. Yeah. You know. Everything I just submitted, submitted, submitted until I became a Christian and the Lord took over my life, and that is when things just escalated for the worse. Yeah, you well, know, because that was no longer she was no longer able to manipulate and control me. Yeah. Well, tell your kids to forgive Grandmama that Grandmama can't help herself. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I'll do that. yeah, tell them they need to forgive Grandma, and then when they truly forgive her, God will forgive them, and He's gonna mm -hmm. give them His love. And they okay. can go free. All right. Yeah, but tell them to forgive Grandma. I'll do that. All right. I'll do that. Thank you so much. All right. I'm glad you called. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, you can't help but wonder how many times has this been repeated tonight? Yeah. Over the million or so people can tune in. Yeah. If they would tune in. They will. The ones that God wants to see it, they're going That's to That's right. They in. will see it, and they will overcome. That's right. You know, but I hear these kinds of stories all over the country from all races of people. Yeah. Our downfall starts in the home. It's not after we go out into the world. Yes, the world takes over if, the, you know, the father and mother fail, but it starts. Your parents either make you or break you. They set you up to have a good life or they set you up to have a bad life. Ezola's message is that the schools are the biggest problem that we got. When the school takes over, when the parents where the parents leaves off. <laughs> you know, if you don't have fathers and mothers watching over their kids when they go off to school, I've often said that you would have to be blind, crippled, and crazy to send your child to a public school system today because it is a social camp of destruction. Yeah. They're teaching the boys and girls how to have sex, you know, turning them away from their parents. There, uh, there was a program in the L.A. Unified School District called... Uh, uh, what is it, outbase clinic or something like that, where your daughter could leave home pregnant uh, in the morning, and they would take her, let her have an abortion, and send her back home, and you never know that she had the abortion. Mm -hmm. Because they tell them, don't tell the parents, your parents won't understand. And they have, they have taught them that it's okay to be homosexuals. They're not teaching them to read and write and do math. They're not teaching them true history about our country. They'll turn them away from America. You literally will have to hate your kids to send them off every morning to the schools. You know, Amy, tell them about that book again. Is it here? Yeah. Tell them why, what you've heard, why people should get all of this book. It's not just because we're trying to sell a book. We're not we put to that whole bookstore to educate people. Yes. We're not in That's the right. business of selling books. <laughs> we sell books. <laughs> that is to educate people. Yeah, this, it's another this, way of getting the truth this, out. This bookstore we has, selling books, we wouldn't sell has stuff more truth we do. in it that you can't get anywhere else. Yeah. 
Where all is your book available, Jesse? They can get it on Amazon.com. They can get it at Barnes and Nobles or Borders bookstores. Okay. Uh, they can call my 800 number for an autographed copy of the book, or and or they can call you guys. Yep. and purchase it from you now. Right, yeah. because we are going to have this in our bookstore, but this is called From Rage to Responsibility. And what Jesse is talking about is really teaching you how to have control of your life, peace in your life, joy and happiness in your life by taking responsibility That's right. instead of blaming everybody else. That's right. And his, his message that God gave him is really directed directly at the black community because that's his heart. That's right. However, that message is for all of us. For all, because for it's all spiritual. Of us. It yeah. is spiritual warfare. So it's a good spiritual warfare book, I bet you. Yes. I can't wait to read this. Oh, good. <laughs> what is um, the name of the, the lawyer that we have from Florida who was. Matt Staver? Matt Staver. You ever, have you ever met Matt Saver? Um, I saw him last night on... Um, he does a program called Liberty Council. Oh, okay. And he represents uh, people who are attacked for... And he was right in the middle of the yes. voting thing it's down in rights. Florida. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. He was on Bill O'Reilly last night. And Bill O'Reilly did not like him. Really? <laughs> really. That was my opinion of watching it for the little minute that I had. But when you, you know, I want to talk about something that's probably very controversial. And that's today people don't vote using their head. They use their party labor or lever to decide. That's right. Am I right on that? You know... 90%, 90% of black Americans vote for the liberal, white, racist, democratic, immoral party. And most of you black people call themselves Christian, right? Uh, the Democratic Party is for abortion, homosexuality, living together before marriage, in my opinion, anti-America, just everything that's wrong. But yet, these people vote for representatives of that party without thinking about it. And it is based on material things rather than spiritual things. It's not about the person's value. It's about what they're going to do for them. Like in the Democratic Party, Democrats tell blacks, if you vote for me, we're going to give you a, a program. We're going to give you uh, affirmative action. We're going to give you uh, reparations. We're, you know. And so they are voting for them for those things, not the person's character. You are absolutely right. And when That's why we ended up with Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton cheated on his wife, lied to the American people. He is a low life. He purged himself. And yet, black Americans voted for him twice. And the reason that they did, because he makes them feel good about being wrong. You tell them, it's not you, it's the white man. It's somebody else. Vote for me, and I'll give you this. I'll make you feel good. It doesn't matter whether it's Republican That's or right. Democrat. That's right. Until... The average person who wants to get that god hole that's eating them up their lunch out of their we're never going to win this country back to what it was called to be we're not going to win it we're not gonna, and we're losing it fast too i have to say especially now that we've been infiltrated by the muslim religion which is is a uh, an evil religion nowhere in the world where that religion is established you're going to find peace that's right. It, it, you, you're just going to... I, I heard a report today that there's a school in Virginia, one of those Muslim schools, and they are teaching the children at that school that the Jews and Christians are worthy of death, mm -hmm. that you should hate them. Mm -hmm. t even in our country... Our own country. They have come here and they are teaching in our country to hate us. Mm -hmm. And what do we do about it? Oh, don't say anything about it. You're mm -hmm. racist. You yeah, have we're... to be tolerant. <laughs> yeah. That, Don't you know? You know, we'll and it's no wonder tired. that God let us go to hell. You know, we see our enemy and we still won't protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> it makes you wonder how many secret Muslims that we have within our upper echelons of our country. That's right. Or is that all part of the one world government? You know, another thing we got to see more of, because so many blacks have been turned away from this country, 
and turned away from Christianity and turned toward the Muslim religion because the, uh, Christianity seemed weak to most people now. Mm -hmm. And the Muslim yes. religion, because it is an angry religion, it seems strong. And because blacks are already angry, they are seduced. Lie in. Yeah, they are seduced into that religion. Islamics are, that's what that it stands anger. for. That's right. And so when our enemy come in and they want to destroy us, they got to offer a few dollars to these black people and say, you know what? They're against you. Let's stick together, people of color. And they're going to be buying more black people to help destroy this country from within. We're going to see more of it. It just so happens that the Islamics control most of the money wealth of yeah. the world. Yeah. And that, you know, and not only that, I have this opinion. There, if there's a conflict in this country, push comes to push, choosing life over freedom. Many people will take the route of freedom and say, what difference does it make? Yeah. I'll submit. Yeah. Yeah, we, we're headed for some trouble. What well, do you got, huh? Apparently you did a pretty good job up in Albuquerque. <laughs> These people wish to express their support for you, and they're praying for your for the continued success of your program. They got to see you in Albuquerque. And, oh, yeah. Uh, got really? got innovation there. Yeah, I heard that that Aren't was the modest? first time a speaker <laughs> received a standing ovation in Albuquerque like that. Really? Yeah. yeah. Where did you speak? It was at, uh, oh, was that a, what was it, Doc? The Hyatt Hotel really? in uh, Albuquerque. The Pyramid one. Yeah. Did, uh, uh, it was a good crowd there. And they, but you were with Larry? I was with Larry Bates from uh, Information Radio Network. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said earlier, I'm doing a national show with them, so they've been taking me around the country, introducing me to the audience and, and stuff like that. So I Larry well always with has a good crowd, but yeah. I never saw him standing ovation yeah. at Disney. Did you get one or did you get <laughs> Larry told me that was the first time that I wow. ended up speaking that they brought in received a standing ovation. Wow. And people really loved the truth there. They they were like, thank God somebody is telling the truth. You told them the same thing we're telling here on yes. the air. Just laid it out. That's good. Yeah. You know, that's one nice thing about television over radio is the fact that this program will be seen several times again and again. Yes, good. It's one of those that will go on the shelf and with a little red mark on it says, don't tape over this. <laughs> All right. Anything, uh, what else? I've gotten a few comments in. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, <laughs> I won't go there. <laughs> Never mind. You um, can go there. No. Um, <laughs> Bad? This one, no. A race war, why and when will it happen? What will it take to avoid it? Good question. Well, it's it's going to happen because we've allowed 40 years of brainwashing to happen uh, in the black community. Whereas most black people, not all, but most hate white people. And so whatever their leaders tell them to do, they're going to do it. Uh, and you will push uh, whites in a corner now. You know, most whites are fed up with being accused of something that they're not guilty of. And a lot of them don't know how to handle that kind of pressure. So they're going to come out fighting too. And so when How I should a white or anybody is pushed in the corner handle it. What would you tell them? They should speak up but don't react. Because when you Man, that's hard. But not if you love the truth. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> if you love God with all your heart, soul and might, it is not hard. Because what happened, when you tell somebody the truth and they get angry at you, oh you just hate me. I can't believe it. And then you react to them on that, then they feel that they are right and you're wrong. And you you become subject to them at that point. Mm -hmm. But if you tell them the truth and don't react to them, don't resent, then the truth stays with them. And even after you have gone your way, it works on them. Right. You know, I'm glad that Larry Bates has opened up his door to you. Yes. I have a question for you, though. Has the Christian television media opened their door to you to discuss openly like we are doing here? Um, this is the first Christian station I've been on. Really? You know, I've been on many networks, non Christian networks, but this is the first one I've been but on. But the right Christians now. ought to be the first one to invite you in. They are afraid. Oh, you know who let me in? Um, uh, Reverend Jerry Farwell. Mm -hmm. He's had me on his show. He's written uh, 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 several of my articles in his paper. And also, I'm set up to speak at his. Uh, it's our school next year, but he's the only one. 
Now he only has a half hour program. Right. But he's the only one. But uh, no network. No network. That's a shame. Yeah, they're afraid. They're afraid of the truth. I'm telling you, they're afraid of the truth. Gosh. They don't want to offend. You know what I'm afraid of? <laughs> Here's what I'm afraid of. What's that? I don't want to stand in front of God Almighty one of these days and he says, why didn't you do with that stations or those That's stations right. what I gave you to there do you with? Go. That's right. But they don't have that kind of fear. They got to. They We've don't. all got to have that fear. That's right. Like I said, didn't they? Late. They will. It'll be too late. There's mm -hmm. only seven words mm -hmm. I want to hear from God. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't have that. Well, mostly we're getting in uh, comments, and this one says that uh, she wants you to know that what you're saying is true. It's confirmation for her. She can see the Holy Spirit working in your life and the love of Christ. She's traveling and is at a motel in Fort Stockton right now. Really? <laughs> that is so cool. Right there on Interstate 10. And then another one, um, just thanking you for speaking the truth. Good to know that people are preaching it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's call Walter back. Take this one and call. He wants. He says he sees a lot of truth in your eyes. He wants to ask you a few questions about revelations. Do you mind? Any questions you want? Any questions? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't run from. If I don't know the answer, I don't know. But I don't run from questions. Well, he's like uh, many of our program get programmers here say. I don't know. That's we'll look right. it up and we'll see you together. That's right. That's right. Here's a question you might be able to answer quickly. Okay. How important is it to ask Jesus to help us to forgive others, i.e. parents? Well, you know, without him, it's, it's going to be impossible that's to do anyway. That's, that's right. right. You can't you get know, the You part. can't do it. That's right. So you got to start. That's where it starts, you know, with him. You got to say, you know what? I'm wrong. And I, you got to say to Jesus, I'm wrong. And I'll help me. And the moment you can admit you're wrong, that's what I said earlier, that's when he would step in and start showing you the right way to go and how to get this stuff done. But the Bible says, of ourselves, we can do nothing. That's the truth. And most people don't want to realize that of themselves, they can do nothing. Mm -hmm. We can't do anything of ourselves. And, but it's who we serve that works through us. If we serve evil, evil going to work through us, and evil going to do its works through us. If we serve good, which is God, then God will work through us, and He will do His work through us. But and, of ourselves, we can't do it. And it's a choice of choosing what God wants, and He tells us to forgive, because That's we right. have no right to ask Him to forgive us That's of right. anything if we don't forgive. So That's right. it's a choice to do His will. That's why He said, when you forgive others, He will forgive us. That's right. You know, He will forgive us. He doesn't say, you don't, That's right. you don't forgive them, you know. And actually, um, when we offend one another, we're supposed to go. If I offend you, Jesse, and I know I've done it, I'm supposed to come to you and ask you for forgiveness. Go straight to I don't person. go to God and say, That's oh, right. forgive me for offending him. That's right. He's not in that business. He's like, no, you offended him. You ask him for forgiveness. You know why people want to go to God? They, That's they, easy. They say, well, I go to God because they don't want to face the person that That's they offended. Right. They are afraid to or they have a big ego. And they, and they don't want to it's hard. look like they're wrong, but that's the only way they got to get over it. They got to go straight to the source. That's what we teach the boys there at the home. When you offend someone, go to, don't go to the neighbors, don't go to anybody else. Go straight to that person. Okay. If I looked like I was off in La La Land a minute ago, I was. Because <laughs> I saw a vision that just shocked me. You know, we support Israel thoroughly about... They need to be able to control their own destiny against yes, the Palestinians and all, which is really fanatic Islamics. Yes, sir. And I just had a vision of what you were talking about. As we, as so goes Israel, so will this country here go if we don't. Without a doubt, if Israel goes, America is gone. Without, there are some things I know for sure and some things I'm not sure about. I am 100% sure if we lose Israel, it's over for America, without a doubt. Oh. Without a doubt. I just saw that, and yeah. I thought, the Lord asked me to ask you that. Yeah. Without mm. a doubt. Um, just to let you know, Walter, they did try to call you, and the number that, ha that they wrote down is apparently incorrect because it didn't get through. If you would call back, we'll try back. We've got about 19 minutes. But that is true. Yeah. And so... 
the American, the average American person in this country will say, oh, let those Jews settle it. They sure will. And, and let, why are they got to be there anyhow? Yep. Why are we got to be in this country? Because <laughs> right. God put us here. That's right. And God put them there. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, uh, when I first moved to California and I was trying to find my way, I used to listen to Louis Farrakhan. And uh, he used to tell us, as black people, and I used to go to the farm there to listen to him. He said, oh, we are wonderful. We are kings and queens. God made us first, all kind of stuff. He got us hooping and hollering, play, praising the Lord, right? And then while we were shouting about that, he said, well, that old blood-sucking Jew don't want you to have it. That old blue-eyed devil don't want you to have it. Then we would start, we would come from a high low, I mean a high to a low, by being mad at the Jews and, uh, and white Americans. And for a long time, I thought that the Jews were against black people. I thought that they had just taken the life out of black people because that's what I was taught. But as a result of that kind of teaching, most blacks don't like Jews. They don't trust them at all. You're right. Because that kind of brainwashing has been going on for 40 years or so in the churches and many other Well, it's the same thing most of the... Um you talk to somebody, a white, and you get the real truth out of them. Yeah. Most it's, of the white people don't even know they hate the Jews. I didn't know how much white people hated Jews until we were attacked and this whole thing started and I started speaking about Israel. That's when I discovered that you a started lot of, speaking and you <laughs> a, a, a lot of white people hate Jews too and I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had no clue about that yeah. until recently. Well, you know, I think for the most part, we've had the corner on the market for the persecution, so, you know. <laughs> I have a really special message. She said to tell you that uh, to keep up the good work and that she is so sorry she didn't get to meet you in person. That's from my mother. Oh, wow. Thanks, Thank Mom. Thank you. And I, I was looking you. forward to meeting her, too. Yeah. She's the lady She's who put it all together. You know what I thought was interesting about your wife and your mother? is when I was reading your book and you talk about how you had to move so many times and she would just had gotten to the point where all she was doing was packing and moving and it seemed that she was so patient with that and I do a lot of family counseling right now with husband and wife and I have to tell you the average wife today would not do that mm -hmm. they don't want to move across the street with their husband that's what we're talking about from state to state country to country and I have a lot of respect for her for having that type of patience. She is she the saw most vision incredible woman yes. I'm telling you they don't make them like that no anymore. they don't well, over 40 I yeah. lost track of 47 <laughs> times we moved to do what God wanted us to do here well I she, look forward to meeting well her in person home. one day you will okay you, you will. will did we get him on mm, no. or we're trying okay difference uh, between a religious experience and a spiritual experience that's a good question well if we can get that in there we're waiting on one other call to come through. How do you forgive your father if you don't know who your father is? Good question. Ooh. And I feel my heart goes out to that person because when you don't know who your dad is, it leaves an emptiness that nothing else can fulfill. You know, it's like you're constantly longing for the father. See, what is missing in people's life, they're longing for the father, but they don't realize that what they're longing for. What I would do if I were that person, I would make a, a serious attempt to try and find him. And I would talk to somebody, somebody knows something, right? And try to find him. But I would go to, to God, to Christ, and ask him to help me with it. I think you know, we got, show me how to forgive her. I think we got somebody on the got phone. It, Ma. Is, Are you there? Is I got it. Yes, I'm here, Al. <laughs> okay, Walter. <laughs> Let's tear loose. We got about 15 minutes. Okay. Shoot us. What, what did you want to talk about? Okay. You got I him? just want to yeah, uh, appreciate, tell you how much I appreciate your program, Al. Thank you. I'm on the phone! Golly, <laughs> bum, I can't get the money off the phone. <laughs> oh, I really do enjoy y'all's program, and I really, really do. I watch your program quite a bit. But this this gentleman, Mr. Peterson? Yes. It's on there now? You're right. Yes. He, uh, I can see the Holy Spirit working in him like you would not believe. And uh, I appreciate y'all putting it on uh, the public that we're living under a religious program that everybody's going straight down underneath. That's right. <laughs> it's 
straight to hell, I'd say, okay? <laughs> you know, one, anyway. point I, one quick point I want to make. Uh, uh, God said that when the world see us, they should see him in us. That's right. That's, right. You know, that's how they'll know him, by seeing him in us. And if people are not seeing that in you, then you need to go back to the prayer closet. That's right. Because yeah. you haven't found him yet. They, uh, he said, you know, he didn't have any fear. Right. Well, the reason he doesn't have any fear is he's got Jesus Christ living in him. Yep. And Jesus does what the Father shows him to do. That's right. Well, that's good, Walter. Yeah. Walter, did you have a question or just want to make these comments? Oh, yeah. I, I was... <laughs> I was going to ask something about the the rapture. Oh, you're about the revelation. Okay. Yeah, right. All right. And uh, y'all just mentioned something about the Israel. Mm-hmm. Well, Israel has not uh, got anything to worry about because the good Lord is going to do his fighting right there around Israel. But... Uh, the, the thing about uh, our religion today is that we're completely deceived yeah. in most of most of our churches. That's true. And it, it is absolutely uh, unbelievable whenever you see the light, you know. Yeah. The and people I just need, got to that point. <laughs> the people need to stand up and insist that the preachers tell the truth. And if they don't tell the truth, don't go back to their churches. That's right. Believe me, right. you don't have to go there and put up with that. If, if they tell the truth, well, they won't have no people come to church. <laughs> you, you know what a person told me one time, though, when I said, you don't have to go there. And this woman looked at her husband, and she said, but honey, who's going to bury us when we die? And I thought, what difference does it make I then? <laughs> That's funny. Well, anyhow. <laughs> Anything else, my brother? Oh, goodness. I just want you to know that I sure do appreciate you all, Al, and you're doing a wonderful job. Well, it's people like you that keep it and make it possible. <laughs> Thank you for... for Thank uh, you very much. Okay, God bless you, Walter. Have a good one. Thank you. That's I want to also say to the person about, you know, if you don't know who your father mm -hmm. is, if they just long to know, you know, Make sure that they set their heart, that they don't resent the father not being there, you know, for whatever reason, you know. Just don't resent the situation. Forgive, even for whatever reason, just forgive. Then they'll start seeing their way clear, you know, because when you just don't have resentment in your heart, God is going to fill you with his love. And when he fills you with his love, it's as though you have everything. It's like nothing is missing. And so since she, that person doesn't have a father, God would become her father if she could just forgive her real father for not being there. That's and all anyone really else who might be connected to her not knowing That's right, her anybody. Is. The people that are keeping him away from her, mm -hmm. forgive those people too. Mm -hmm. Because you can't love God and have resentment in your heart. They can't dwell in the same place. Mm -hmm. You have to repent before you're able to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And see, the kingdom of heaven is within us. And it's also up there, too, but it's within us. And when we repent, we enter into the kingdom, and we start living from within out rather than from out in. That's why the Bible said the stuff that goes in, it destroys us, but that that comes out gives us life. So when you forgive, you go to enter into the kingdom from within, and you start living that way. And so just let all that stuff go. Yes, it was wrong. But you're hurting yourself by hating or resenting people for it. And they'll never be able to play the tune that God gave them to play no way. if they don't do it. No way. It's not going to happen unless you forgive. That's right. No way. So how can my family forgive each other when no one will make the first move? There is so much strife. Don't worry about them. You make the first move. Um, if they ignore you, at least it's straight with you. Am I right? That's right. If That's they right. ignore you, forgive them. You know, just you, you have to forgive. You know, I have a, a son, one son I had out of wedlock uh, when I was 18 because I did what my father did and he did what, his, what I did. But my son grew up and he hated me. Literally just hated. He came to California to visit. I like California. He hated California. But I told him, you know what, son, I understand. I wasn't there for you. I know why you feel that way, and I'm sorry for not being there for you. And from that point forward, I had to be patient with him. He cursed me out, called me every kind of name in the book, 
But I forgave him because I understood what he was going through, right? And now we have a good relationship. I just spent this Thanksgiving holiday with he and his wife and, and their two children because I understood. I didn't react to him. I didn't take the cursing out personally because I knew he was mad that I wasn't there for him. And that's how that person going to have to do with their family. Go and apologize for resenting them and don't worry about if they forgive you or not. Just don't take it personally. And I think that the average person is watching this program. You got to understand you're not out in the boat all by yourself. The devil has been, he's, the Word of God says he came to kill and destroy. That's right. And he'll do it. That's right. And you may think, well, I'm the only one that's never forgiven my father. No, everybody and their mama around you are going through the same thing. That's well, right. You might be the only one in the boat, <laughs> but you're not the only boat on the lake. There the lake's you go. full of boats. <laughs> one of the ways the devil does that, just, just causes his destruction, is when you're angry, mm -hmm. you escape into your imagination. And so the devil set you up in there. He made he made you he caused you to make bad decisions that seem right. He caused you to make uh judge others and judge yourself. You literally can't have control of your life because you're in his world. He's deceiving you in that way. But as soon as you drop that anger, then you can live by the light within. And you can just see your you walk by the light. You can see your way clear. Mm -hmm. So you got to come out, you know, come out of that dark world of your imagination, and it will happen when you forgive. It will happen. I'm a living witness. Amen. He, um, and God has something to say too about judging others, and that's don't do it. That's right. That's my business. It's not your business. He's real clear on he, that. He sure is. He said, "Judge, and you shall be judged." And he wasn't talking about being <laughs> judged by him because we're all going to no, face that. No, that's he right. About? That's right. Who are you going to be judged by? Everybody around you. Everybody around you. Because when they hear what you're saying about anybody else anyway. You're going to be judged by everybody around you and you're going to judge yourself. That's right. You really do. You start hating yourself and you see yourself differently too when yes. you judge others. You know, we've talked a lot about single parenting here. And, yeah. But I think one of the biggest problems I see in this country today is the number of people who have divorced parents it's single again but not the yeah, single like divorced, you were yeah. talking about and they don't know how to deal with that yeah they may not admit it but i know for a fact when on, my parents got divorced in the 30s that was nothing nobody got divorced in those days yeah you know? that's right especially way back then in the 30s that was way back then <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's but an awful thing when it happens when you, it's like when parents divorce for the children, it's like putting out the light. They can, because children become what we are. Mm -hmm. If you want to know what a parent is, take a look at the children because they're the spitting image, they're the mirror of what their parents are. Even those parents who go to church and look beautiful and act holy at church, you can look at their kids and tell what they really are. They're putting on the front. So when they divorce, they'll put it out the light and the kids can't see the right way to go and it's devastating or if the father's in the home and he's not the head of his family the same thing can happen if he's not a righteous man i don't mean a, a a bully or someone that's trying to play man but a righteous man if he's not that the same thing can happen to the children are you familiar with teen challenge i've heard of them yes these young men and, and men that are in here Right, helping us on those phones. Oh yes, I see. <laughs> I would imagine if we were able to talk to them, and which I have, a lot of them had father image problems. Yes, a lot of them. I'm telling you, Al, that's what the problem is: is the lack of father. That's where the breakdown starts. Every time I do counseling, the first thing I deal with is the family relationship, and 99.9% .9 of the time. They hate their fathers and they hate their mothers. They hate their mothers more than they do their fathers, but they're afraid to say it because they, have, they don't know how to deal with the hell that's in mama. And a lot of times mama make them feel like the father is bad and making herself look good. You know, she'll say, oh, my husband is so mean to me. She looks like the innocent one when she's really the one that drove the husband out of the home. And rather than saying that to the children, you know, son or daughter, I didn't treat your, husband, your father right. You know, I was just so whatever. She would say, well, your dad didn't love you. So they end up thinking their father didn't love them and thinking that mom is the innocent one. 
but it's with the family. When that spiritual order is broken, all hell break loose. All mm -hmm. hell break loose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got yeah, lots of calls, did you? Got any? Other? We got about five minutes here. Any well, one here. Did I give you time to answer that one on the religious experience and the spiritual experience? The difference between that. Religious experience is studying and 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 by rote learning about God. You know, someone say, uh, you know, believe in God. You say, oh yeah, I do. You just know about it. That is, and then you go to church and you play religion. Church, yeah. You know, you're playing, but when you look at your lifestyle, you have no power. You still have fear and doubt and worry. You're looking for love in all the wrong places. But you got that religious spirit because you know about God. The spiritual experience is when you're born of His Spirit. And when you're born of His Spirit, those things that you were looking for before, you no longer look for those things. Lust leaves. Yeah, the, speaking the lust from a man's yeah. uh, You don't look for love because you have love. You, you don't feel like anything is missing in your life. You have no fear, no doubt, no worry, because now you're born of His Spirit. And His Spirit has everything that you need. And so you walk by faith. You know, you walk by the light. You have no doubt and no worry at all. It, it's like you have everything. How do you get that? By admitting that you don't have it. The moment you can admit that you don't have it, you will get it at the twinkling of an eye. If you are born again and you know how to get the God once through. You, once you get it, yeah. you got it forever. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go up and down. It doesn't change with situations. It, you're not feeling this way one day and down the next day. Either you have it or, or you, you don't, don't have it. How many boys you got in your home? We have... We have eight right now. We can only, the house, because we don't get government money, we can only do You don't want government money. We don't want it. Mm -hmm. We don't want it. Uh, we have eight in there right now. Some of them are going to be graduating at the end of this year. We, we have a waiting list of boys. And some of them now are even younger. It's so sad because they're getting younger now because the parents are younger, the mother are younger. What do you mean, what age? Uh, when we first started out, it was 18. Now it's 13. And we get requests for boys as young as 10. Nine and ten years old. How long have you been running your program? Twelve years. Yeah, 12 so years. you've got results of people who've we gone have through. Good results. Uh, these boys are dropping so their anger. Re reproduced yourself through these men. Yes. That you've gone through. That's right. They're dropping their anger. They're starting business. They're going out and working. They're finishing school. And what's most important is that they're not blaming other people for their problem. They now understand and see how to deal with people, mm -hmm. not based on color, but what is right. You know, we had told people call in with your questions. We didn't tell them call in with your prayer request. I mean, you know how to pray, don't you? Have we got any prayer requests in there? I have one. I have one prayer request. Well, I need to tell the people who called in who wanted to talk to you. I just uh, heard from God. you got to come back. <laughs> I would love to. He'll be back. He'll be back. This has been fun. But I do want to share some of the, the comments that, uh, again, uh, you are truly, he truly appreciates you, and uh, the world still has a chance because of people like you. And we're alone. Mm -hmm. It's going to take all of us, though. Yes, you know, it does. The world it is a big world, <laughs> and uh, it's going to take all of us to wake up. Well, it looks like everybody's enjoying what you've got to say. Well, I appreciate that. I, I, I just want to say to you, all thanks so much for the prayers and stuff like that, because I can use good prayers, believe me. And, uh, and get his book. That helps him yeah. when you buy it a does. book. It helps us to get the, get out of a job, the work. That's right. Done. That's for sure, so we can do it. And not only that, it makes sure that maybe you don't have a tape recorder, but if you get this book, guess what? You're taking Jesse right into whoever you want to get it into. Yeah. All right? That's right. It's readily available. You can also uh, call our bookstore. They are placed in order for that tonight, and it's 19.95. You can get it at Amazon.com, Barnes and Nobles. Yeah. If you order it from Jesse himself, he will autograph it. I autograph it. it. Yeah, they can call my 1-800-411 bond. 1-800-411 B O N D. Yes, okay. or two six six three. Two six six three. Right. Must be on the internet, Austin, Texas. You went around the world with us tonight. Let's pray over these, brother, oh, okay. and make me a promise you'll one. come back. I will come back anytime. Okay. I will. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I, I thank you for this night. I thank you for this fellowship. 
I ask, Father, that uh, you open our eyes, that we may see, our ears, that we may hear.